Hello everyone! Today for our breaking news segment, we present a novel drug that has been approved by the FDA to treat the rare disease spinal muscular atrophy. First with the introduction of Spine Raza as a drug for SMA back in 2016 and now, day by day, the advancements of drug and vaccinations is growing. Ever wonder how these drugs came into the market and the many years of trial and error associated with the process? Well, stay with us and you'll learn a little bit about drug discovery and this novel drug, Zolgensma, averaging at $3.7 million Canadian. So, how does drug discovery work? There are generally four steps to summarize the extensive process, which are as follows. Initially, there is some sort of interest in a biological target aiming to study a specific illness or disease that affects the public. Using this, scientists will perform months to years of research, depending on what has already been done, using various biochemical techniques and assays. If successful, a lead molecule is discovered, which acts as a starting point for finding a new potential drug. If this lead is fitting, it can then move forward to preclinical development where more assessments are needed to determine the potential to move forward to three phases of clinical trials. Once three steps of clinical trials are performed, the drug is ready for FDA filing and approval. It is important to remember that each part of the process results in successes and failures, making the field very ambiguous. Using what we know about the process, we can learn more about how Zolgensma made it to the market as an approval therapy for children diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy. A child with spinal muscular atrophy presents with weakness in and deterioration of their muscles months after birth. This causes essential functions such as breathing, eating, and sleeping to become compromised. It is caused by a loss of specialized nerve cells called motor neurons that control muscle movement. However, with only a single dose of Zolgensma, both the quality of life and the lifespan of a child are significantly improved. In the first stage of drug discovery, pertaining to the discovery and commercialization of Zolgensma, it is important to understand SMA at the genetic level and potential ways to tackle the illness. Spinal muscular atrophy occurs when there is a vital gene that is missing or not working properly, and this gene is called SMN1. Genes make up the blueprint for all of our functional proteins that are needed for survival. So you can imagine that without SMN1, some particular function would be disrupted. SMN1 is a gene that codes for the survival motor neuron protein, which is needed for motor neuron cell survival. Motor neuron cells, in turn, are responsible for communicating with our muscles and essentially tell them how to work. Without SMN proteins, our motor neuron cells lose their strength and eventually their function. This is what compromises basic functions in children with SMA. Zolgensma is a therapy that works at the genetic level. The drug itself is made of a new, working copy of a human SMN gene to essentially replace the one that is missing or not working properly. It is placed in an adeno-associated virus 9, in short, an AAV9 vector, which simply acts to safely carry the gene to where it is needed, which in this case is to the motor neuron cells in the body. Once the vector with the gene of interest reaches its destination, the drug initiates the creation of SMN proteins without actually becoming a part of the child's DNA. Although this drug does not bring back lost motor neuron function, it helps to maintain the function of motor neuron cells that have not yet died, expanding the lifespan of children that have SMA. The second step in the drug discovery process is preclinical development, where the goal is to research and collect all kinds of data to ensure that the treatment is safe. It usually consists of a series of tests that are done in vivo, meaning they use animal models or in vitro, which does not require the use of any live organisms. Now, there are variations of the AAV9 vector that have been discovered and developed through both in vivo and in vitro research to prove its safety and effectiveness when treating various medical conditions. These typically involve the body's central nervous system and various muscle disorders such as cystic fibrosis, Parkinson's disease, Canavan disease, and limb girdle muscular dystrophy. There have been countless successful trials, but let's go over three where AAV therapy has been successful. First, 
An in vivo model shows that a specific AAV vector was successfully delivered to the airway of rabbits and had continued to be naturally expressed, indicating that this could be a safe and potential treatment for adult cystic fibrosis patients. A second in vivo trial shows that a specific AAV vector was able to bring a vital gene to skeletal muscle and the central nervous system, which allowed the body to naturally produce various types of proteins. Lastly, a specific AAV vector was used to increase dopamine production in patients with Parkinson's disease. Increased dopamine production is currently being researched as it may be correlated to ease in symptoms. The third step in the drug discovery process is probably the most challenging and in-depth. In this stage of drug development, extensive clinical research is conducted to test the drug's effectiveness and its potential side effects. A breakthrough was made when a team of researchers created a clinical trial that had led to the discovery of a treatment for SMA which gave rise to Zolgensma. They were able to produce an IV injection of the AAV9 gene vector resulting in a dramatic restoration of lower motor neuron function in infants with severe spinal muscular atrophy. Afterwards, three different clinical trials of Zolgensma on patients with SMA type 1 were conducted. START is one of the successful clinical trials completed prior to the approval of Zolgensma therapy for SMA. This trial included 15 patients with SMA type 1. Of the 15 patients, 12 patients received a high dose of Zolgensma and 3 patients received a low dose. Results showed that all 12 patients in group 1 were able to breathe normally without any breathing support. They had improved muscle movement and were able to sit and even walk. However, the three patients who received the low dose required permanent breathing support. Overall, results from several clinical trials conclude that Zolgensma is able to help kids with spinal muscular atrophy. The patient's symptoms improved drastically and they did not need any breathing support. Some of the patients showed even improvements in their movement at the start of the study, but some showed improvements later on. In terms of the side effects, the trials demonstrated that patients treated with Zolgensma had elevated liver enzymes and experienced vomiting. Finally, when it comes to the last step of drug discovery, it's all a waiting game. After clinical trials have been completed, a review meeting is conducted and the FDA connects with the drug sponsor prior to the submission of a new drug application. The drug sponsor formally asks the FDA to approve a drug for marketing in the United States by submitting an NDA. An NDA includes all animal and human data and its analyses and information about how the drug behaves in the body and how it is manufactured. After an NDA is received, the FDA has two months to decide whether to file the NDA to be reviewed. If the FDA chooses to file the NDA, the FDA review team is assigned to evaluate the sponsor's research on the drug's safety and effectiveness. After the application review process, the FDA begins to review the drug's professional labeling to make sure that the appropriate information is communicated to healthcare professionals and consumers. Meanwhile, the facilities where the drug will be manufactured ensure that they are in compliance with the FDA's laws and regulations. When all of these steps are fulfilled, the FDA reviewers will approve the application allowing for the drug to enter the market with post-marketing monitoring and promotions. In terms of Zolgensma, the drug had carried out all of the said steps successfully and it was approved on May 24, 2019 in the United States. Ever since, it had been approved in all 27 European nations and Japan. However, unfortunately, it is yet to be available in Canada and parents need special authorization from Health Canada, the drug regulatory agency, to gain access to the drug for their child. Without that authorization, they would have to go to a hospital in the States to get it administered, bringing the total cost to nearly $4 million Canadian. You're probably wondering, when will Zolgensma enter the Canadian market? Well, Health Canada is responsible for authorizing the sale and use of new drugs in Canada. It takes about two to four years for Health Canada to review the drug safety and efficacy information for, from clinical trials before deciding to approve or reject the use of a new medication. So, it's safe to say that we have a couple of years before hearing back from Health Canada's decision on the use of Zolgensma in Canada. 
If you are eager to learn more about Zol Jensma and the personal experiences of families and children experiencing improved SMA symptoms post-drug injection, visit zoljensma.com slash family dash videos. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below what content you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching!